Welcome to The Expectant Knitter. I am your host, Steph, also known as The Knitting Samurai on Ravelry. Um, you can find show notes and any information on the blog, expectantknitter, all one word, dot blogspot, dot com. Um, this podcast is a place for me to talk about my knitting, which is my main passion, and being pregnant. So let's get right into it. It's week 12, and I'm calling this Tulips Are Coming Up. <laughs> ah, and here is Miss Izzet, who has come over with her mouse. You want to look at the camera? Is this? She chewed the tail off her mouse. So here she is, and all of her is adorable glory. She's actually a uh, Devon Rex, and her color is chocolate silver brown patched tabby mink. So, but we just call her white. And actually, Steve calls her the dirty Q-tip because she's white, but she's got some brown and orange spots on her tail and on the bottoms of her feet. She always has dirty feet, I call them. But anyways, that's is it for you. Um, let's see. Let's jump into whips now that I've been thoroughly distracted by the cuteness of my cat who will now want to play fetch the mousy all through the episode. So don't mind my shooting out arm from time to time to keep her satisfied and prevent her from looking at us with the most pitiful big giant eyes and doing a silent meow because she wants me to throw the mouse. Um, so this week, oh shoot, let me grab one thing, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so this week, this week I finished the Cherry O hat, or I kind of think of it as like cherries on top. <laughs> um, it's a Susan B. Anderson design. I used Barocco Comfort DK, talked about it last week. I love it! It came out so cute! With the little cherries. I stuffed the cherries with um, little tiny mini skeins or little balls of the red yarn so that they wouldn't have, because you know how sometimes when you put the polyester fill, the white, it shows through the stitches if it gets stretched. It will not show through if you use the yarn. So I did that. And it has a little leaf. And I love it. Baby hat, baby hat, baby hat. So I finished this guy this week. And then I started right here, this bag. Uh, <laughs> I started um, the hat I talked about last time, the knockoff of, I think it was Cameron's mom, of the carrots on top. That's how far I got very, very successful. Again, I'm using the um, Barocco DK, no, Barocco Comfort DK. That was a not so silent meow. <laughs> um, yeah, in a dark green and then a, a lighter green for stripes off the top of the hat, same as the Cherry O. And so the main color will be the lighter green. And then these will be carrots instead of cherries. That will be so cute. So that's next on the needles. And I did the 12 month size for the cherry o hat. I'm doing the 12 month size again because it has to offset, you know, the green has to offset the pink. So that's what's one of the things that's on my needles. Actually on Saturday morning, I woke up at 5.30, which before I was pregnant, that was my normal wake up time on Saturdays because there's so much potential and there's so much to do on Saturdays. And you have to make the most of those days because it's not a work day. Work days, I'm hitting snooze until 6.30 because I can't get my butt out of bed. But on the weekends, that's when the good knitting time is. That's when you get to knit for 15 hours straight. Woohoo! I know, I know. Those days are limited or non-existent in the near future after the little one arrives. But for now, Saturday, got up all on my own, wide awake. Okay, so this is a little odd. I've been so exhausted. What's going on here? I don't feel nauseous. Hmm, let's eat breakfast. Go through the whole day. I knit from 7 to 7 or 7 to 9. I mean, it was a crazy long length of time. No, it was 9 because we had some friends come over for dinner and I was still rocking my needles until they left. So, um, and what did I knit? I knit the tulip sweater. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so this is the one year old size and these are my color substitutions because I didn't want to get the kit silly me a $60 kit is too expensive so I'll just find the closest colors I can and substitute yarns and spend $90 that makes perfect sense so um, this is actually this hot 
fuchsia, whatever, purpley magenta color is the only one that's really um, dream and color classy. The rest of it is, um, well, I showed them all to you. Malabrigo Rios are the solid ones. And then, uh, okay, okay, there's a mouse. And then the, um, these multicolored looking ones are Cascade 220 paints. So I'm really thrilled with how this came out. It, um, I knit the sweater itself during sa on Saturday, so it took me, whatever I said, however many hours of knitting to complete it. Um, and then I started doing the edging, so it's a seed stitch edge, and then it's an applied I-cord all the way around the bottom and around the top, and then you make an, another one for the neck. That took me as long as knitting the sweater which shocked and appalled me. <laughs> it has more finishing than full-size adult garments that I've knit. But um, I'm thrilled with the results. I absolutely love the colors. I cannot wait to put a little girl in the sweater. I cast off and was like, okay, planning the next one. What colors am I going to use? What am I going to do? <laughs> but I also realized that after having spent so much money, putting so much love into it, realizing how beautiful these colors are, the yarn itself, the variegation, and the, um, it just, it broke my heart when I finished because I realized that I am more likely to save up, save this and hold it and not want to put it on the baby because it is so beautiful. And even though it's 100% super washable, I probably will not want to be throwing it in the washing machine. And so I can just see it. You put it on the baby, the baby pukes on it or whatever and it sits in the laundry room for two weeks until you clean it. And then you put it on the baby, wears it for an hour, gets sick, in the laundry room. Like, oh God, I hope that's not what happens. And I'm gonna have to work really hard not to let that happen. But that's uh, how I feel about it right now. If you were to put a baby in front of me, <laughs> I would probably not want to put this sweater on it. But it's so pretty and I love the teal and oh, yay. So that's my tulip after Talking about it for weeks, I knit it in a weekend. So, I love it. And after realizing um, that I tend to cherish my more pricey yarns, and even if they say machine wash, no problem, I um, thought, next thing I knit, I should keep on with the Barocco Comfort DK, like acrylics, things that you don't cherish, that you don't really care about, but so what if it gets washed and dried and it looks a little worn? It's not that great a yarn, or it, it is a, I don't know how to say this without being, being insulting, but um, I decided to take a trip to Joann's rather than my local yarn store for the next project that I'm working on, and I w went down there with the intention of buying, I have used, um, oh my god, where is it, get me, um, I need to throw it behind something so that you can go dig there next time. Um, yeah, so I have used uh, Burnett Natural Alpaca or something. So that was an alpaca acrylic blend for a baby blanket gift before in the past, and I really like that. So I went in, but that was at AC Moore's. Our AC Moore shut down. So hang on. Check that. Um, <laughs> I went in there looking for something like that again at Michael's because no AC Moore. Um, I couldn't find that. What I did find was, please hold, while I be the disorganized podcaster, um, cottonies. So one of my girlfriends has used this to make baby stuff in the past. She was really happy with it. It's a 50-50 cotton acrylic blend. I bought six skeins of it for $32, I think. So six skeins. I'm hoping that's enough to make a baby blanket. That's my next project on the horizon because it seems like we have a few, I've done a lot of hats, I've done a lot of sweaters. Next, what else can I be knitting for this baby to keep it being well swaddled and knitted goodness? I'm not going to knit three sizes of baby blankets. I'm going to knit one and take it from there. So I got this red, which is very vibrant. I got a teal color, a purple I've started using. Um, this lime green. So it's a rainbow blanket, in case you can't tell. This coral, actually, I think they call it terracotta. And a yellow. So this is going to be a Maja B. 
baby blanket. I don't know. M-A-J-A. I cannot pronounce the designer's name. Um, can you see all of them? I'm sorry. But I'll link it in the show notes. Uh, we, as my knitting group, knit one of these uh, in the past for one of the girls when she had a baby. Everybody knit a square and we ended up with almost a full-size blanket. Like a full-size bed blanket. It was huge. So <clears throat> I don't want to do that again obviously, and that would be a lot of squares for me to knit. So I am going to um, do, I use size 7 needles instead of size 5 as the pattern calls for. I knit my first square. Here you go. With the purple, the terracotta, and the very light pale yellow. It's ugly. I know it needs to be blocked. I remember that now that I knit this. But, um, and plus I was working out the kinks, like there's a spot where you can see I cast off a row too early so it looks a little different. I don't know if you can see. I don't know that I want to show you my mistakes. Don't you hate knitters who do that? I do, because no one else would ever notice except they're like, oh look, I dropped a safer. Sorry, I take that back. Rewind. <laughs> it didn't happen. Okay, um, so it needs to be blocked. So then this is my first square and it's eight by eight. At least that's what I'm assuming, because that's what the other squares were. We did use a different yarn for hers, but um, so I'm thinking if I do five by five, five squares by five squares, that'll be 40 inches across. And since I had so much fun with the applied I cord, but I love the finished effects um, from the tulip sweater, I thought that might be a nice finished edge because I know me the thought of doing. Um, you know, garter stitch rows or stripes across the edge of the blanket on all four sides. And I'll end up hibernating. I won't want to do that. But the little squares are nice and portable and mindless. And I've been watching Battlestar Galactica. Very good. <clears throat> Actually, it was very good. And now I'm on season three. I'm very hurt. But I need to just keep going because they will get back out into space. But, um... So I've been watching that and working on this, and it's good and quick and mindless. So that's what one done, 23 to go. So there you go. Is that 5x5? Five five? No, 24 to go. <laughs> Is it 5x5 five five I want? Yeah. I don't know. I did a whole diagram in Excel last night. I wasted like two hours figuring out like, if I put these three colors together and this one's on the outside and then the next time it's on the inside and then the next time it's on the this and how to make sure I use the same amount of red and coral as I do blue and green because I want it to be a rainbow blanket and it blanket. So anyways, enough about the Maja blanket. Um, I'm sure I will have more progress to report next week on that one. So that being said, Let's move on to expectations. So I told you about Saturday. That was officially um, 11 weeks, six days in when I had my, oh my God. And it's been six days since. So it's Thursday now. That was Saturday. Haven't had any symptoms return. Had a little bit of heartburn. I think that's normal. I'm fully prepared. I have a whole big thing of Tums because I normally get heartburn. It's weird. It runs in cycles. I'll go for months and months with no heartburn and then it seems like for one full month I'll have heartburn every single night so I am a have always been a fan of rural aids but then there was the recall thing so I'm gonna do Tums because that's what other expectant moms I know did so that's where I'm headed but that was just one day that I had heartburn and since then I've been fine haven't dared to eat pizza that's the curse of the pizza but I did have um, eggplant parmesan vegetarian eggplant parmesan and um, it went down fine. So yay, that's always fun. Um, still very suggestible to food. I'm really glad we don't have um, TV of any like cable, bottom channel, none of it. Um, it was just exorbitant at one point. Actually, it's been two years now. Did I tell you this before? Maybe I did. Anyways, I wouldn't have TV without DVR and by the time you did internet, TV, DVR, and phone, it was like 100 something a month and ridiculous. So we, I think it was 170 something. So we cut out TV and, oh, and we had some premium channels on there too. So cut out the TV and the DVR and it's much more reasonable now. So that's why I, ha we have Netflix and I stream a lot of stuff on Netflix. 
But I am very thankful, this has a point, back to pregnancy, that we don't have TV because if I saw the food commercials, I don't know what I would do. It's bad enough when people say food at work and I'm like, I need that. What? Who said it? Who said apple pie? I need apple pie. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that continues. Um, <laughs> so I have a funny story. Okay, so the other morning I was snoozing. Mm, I don't want to get up alarm clock, right? And is it my darling dear little Miss Biz over here? Oh yes, look at you, you fighter. Um, she was sitting next to me saying, pet me, pet me, pet me, because she does in the morning. She hears the alarm and that's her cue to come sit on my pillow and stare at me until I get up. Um, <laughs> so she was sitting next to me and I thought, what? My stomach feels kind of funny. And so I, I put my hand on my belly to see if I could feel anything. And as I was holding my fingers on there, kind of pushing a little bit, I thought, well, that's weird. That's a heartbeat. Wait, no. That's my heart to beat. <laughs> and then what I felt sort of went whoop, off to the side. And I was like, and then there was like no pressure and it was my normal belly feeling, right? You know, you push on it and your belly's kind of soft and mushy. But so this hard little packed area that I felt all of a sudden went sliding off to the side. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, is that the baby? And I had about 10 seconds of laying there going, did I just feel the baby? And then I passed the gas. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure it was a gas bubble that was just working its way out. But it was a fun 10 seconds, you know. I hear it'll be about week 20 before I feel anything, supposedly. So as of right now, not feeling anything <laughs> in the belly department. But we did have a um, doctor's appointment this morning. Everything's good. We got the first round of test results back. Everything checked out fine. Good. Happy. And while we were there, we got to hear the heartbeat for the first time. We haven't had that experience before. So that was pretty, pretty exciting. Okay, I'll be honest. She like poked around, found my uterus. Okay, here it is. And there was a student in with her. So the student poked around, found my uterus. And by this point, I'm like, stop pushing. You're going to make me have to pee. And so it was really quick to find the heartbeat with a little monitor, right? And it projects into the, like on the speakers into the room. And so we hear it. And I, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I start squealing and then I start giggling and Steve is next to me holding my hand, squeezing my hand and I swear we spent 45 seconds to a minute with me giggling and her like trying to hold on to me as I'm on the table like <laughs> and she's trying to hold it in place. It was pretty funny but then we listened some more and so we got 164 beats per minute. I don't, I asked her if that meant anything about gender at this point and she said no, everybody's heart beats really fast at 12 weeks so that was her take on it. Um, and it was a different midwife, so there are three in the practice, I've now seen two, so next time I will meet the third one. So, that was pretty good. I also, um, joined the Ravelry birth group, or whatever it is for my month, so expecting in August 2011, I joined that group. And I also joined the expecting in May 2011 group because the August group had 30 people in it. That's hardly anybody, but I figured there are people that aren't out of the pregnancy closet yet. The May group had over 100. It's full of people. They're all talking about all kinds of interesting things. So I lurked around in there and saw what they were doing. Um, I read the chatter about, you know, at this point, a lot of people uh, pop. So their uterus comes over their pelvic bones and their belly starts to show. I'm big. So I, I haven't noticed that, and so I'm, I'm feeling very lucky that I am still comfortable in my pants, in my, oh boy, in my sweaters, you know, all my normal apparel. Mac is smelling the camera. He says hello from behind the scenes. That's the kind of cat he is, though. I'm not surprised he would be a behind the scenes cat. Um, yeah, so if you're pregnant, you should go look for the Ravelry groups and join them because it's really nice to hear other people. I mean, you read the literature, you know, week by, what's the new one I just got? Pregnancy week by week and girlfriend's guide that's on its way here to being pregnant, what to expect when you're expecting. You read all those books. Oh, and I just got the Jenny McCarthy belly laughs. Pretty funny, I have to say. And I'm not a Jenny McCarthy fan, but she's got a good take on what's going on and what to expect, so I am enjoying that. But you read the books, and this is all, you know, oh, this is what to expect, and this is what will probably happen. It's different when you read someone saying, 
I got up this morning, I chucked and I felt awful and you know what, drinking orange juice helped. And everyone else says, you know what, drinking cranberry juice helps and they go back and forth and I don't know. It's, it's all anecdotal but it feels nice. So take that for what you will and I suggest you join the groups on Ravelry because they are so small and you really do get to know everybody in them versus like the Big Baby Center site which has lots and lots of people that are due the same day you are. So, um, what else do I have to tell you about? What's new with me? What's new with you? Um, as you can see the hair is growing. Oh my god, shoot me. I have a haircut trim whatever next week so maybe next time you'll see me my hair will have more shape than just straight brown blob <clears throat> I really wish someone had told me ahead of time you can't have highlights or any sort of you shouldn't have highlights or any sort of hair dyeing while you're pregnant and I am sitting here nervously shaking Swedish fish Easter eggs which is fish eggs that's kind of gross for me but whatever um, since I've been pregnant, I've been eating lots of the fruits. I also apparently need to eat lots of artificial fruit flavored candies. I think it's because the chocolate isn't working out so well for me. And I eat, would eat two or three pieces of chocolate a day and now I'm not eating any. So I'm looking for a substitute for that, like, here's a quick sweet fix. So I have been eating these and my darling husband got these for me today so I came home and they were waiting on the coffee table for me so yay he's taking care of me <laughs> um, so those are new uh, what else is new so I showed you the new yarn for the Maja I also while I was at Michael's because who can pass up a dollar twenty nine or twenty five a skein bought some of the um, sugars and cream kitchen cotton like perfectly with their countertops they um, yeah, so I'm going to whip up a couple of these this weekend. And other than that, there really isn't anything else new. I'm planning a trip this weekend with my mom. It's about a five-hour car ride, just the two of us. And I'm claiming pregnancy as a form of illness, and so she has to drive so I can knit. And <laughs> she doesn't knit. She just talks, so I should get to knit. Um, and so while I'm in the car, I will be working on either my Maja squares or these, because that's easy garter stitch knitting. I'm going to bring along the BFF socks in case I get bored and want some circular knitting and the carrot top hat, but I think it's more likely I'm going to knit these. Easy back and forth garter stitch, nice and squishy. Do -do -do, sing you a song. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> and <laughs> so I'll be doing that this weekend, so I'll have stuff to report on that. And Want to see my vision from my next tulip sweater? Okay, I'll show you. You don't have to ask me twice. So I have this yarn that it's um, Lorna's Laces Shepherd Worsted. Yep, 100% Superwash Merino. Uh, zombie Barbecue? Zombie Barbecue, yeah. So I bought this at Rhinebeck in October, knowing that we were going to get pregnant soon. And I love the colors. It's... um. Can you see it? It's a lime green, olive green, slightly purple and red all together. So I thought I would pair that color up with um, some leftover Malabrigo Rios from my first one. This is um, Shibui Worsted 100% Superwash. I think it's a Chinese red some sort of red, very similar red with these, and the um, Malbrio Rios again in a purple, and maybe some leftover blue, and do, instead of doing eight different colors, limit it to the four of these, and maybe it'll be a little more boyish, that's what I'm hoping, anyways, we'll see, I was thinking this will be main trim color, so, I love these colors, so that's what I'm going to knit next for a tulip, but that'll be in a few weeks, not anytime soon. So, I think that's it, kids. <laughs> See, can you even tell I'm feeling better? Like, uh, I've been walking around the office telling everybody, I'm human, I'm human. It's been so long since I've been human. Because when you think about it, I've been pretty sick for about eight weeks. So, yay! <laughs> Did you see my feelings? 
anyways, that's all for today. I hope you have a great week and happy knitting.